In this video, you will learn what influences us. You will find out what drives all of our behavior. And you will understand what truly motivates you and me and every person on earth. Research in the field of psychology has shown that there are six fundamental human needs that drive all of our behavior, good or bad. Whether you want to find a job or quit your job in order to pursue your dreams. You want to start a business, you want to travel the world, f finding a partner, getting married, having kids and raising kids. But also crazy things, things like people dyeing their hair purple or I don't know what color. Or, or also really sad things. Why do people commit crimes? And why do some people have suicidal thoughts? The six fundamental human needs are the answer to all of these questions. In this video, I'll be talking about the six basic human needs, how to influence us, and how you can spot them and identify them in yourself and in others. And towards the end of the video, I'll explain you how you can um, communicate differently with people depending on what type of needs they have and which needs drive their actions. If, for example, somebody is certainty driven, so is really looking for stability, certainty in a job, in a specific situation, you need to communicate with them completely differently in order to influence them, in order to um, inspire them, compared to somebody who is variety driven, who really seeks change, who is a risk taker. And I'll be covering that towards the end of the video. All right, should we get started? The first need is the need for certainty. This is the most fundamental need and we all have it. It's a basic need for survival. And it summarizes the need for food and shelter, for example. If you don't have anything to eat and if you don't have a roof over your head, then uh, you usually don't <laughs> seek to satisfy any of the other needs. Um, it also includes the right to have a job or to get a regular income or for younger people, for students, the right to learn or the ability to study. And um, you can usually identify people based on their job. For example, my wife, she's an act actuary, actuary, insurance mathematician. <laughs> it's a difficult word to pronounce. But she works in insurance because she's not a risk seeker. She has picked a profession where she um, works in a corporate environment to mitigate risk and to help companies to be less exposed to risk. Um, that's a very good example of somebody who is certainly driven, really looking for security, looking for stability and trying to avoid risk. Um, accountants maybe is uh, definitely going in the direction or people who have government jobs. If people look for a long-term job with long-term benefits, pension and high job security, um, that's also a good sign of somebody who is certainly driven. Uh, we, for example, <laughs> as my wife is working in insurance, we have a lot of insurance policies running, life insurance and other kinds of insurances. And that's also another sign of somebody who is security or certainly driven. All right, first need, certainty. One. Certainty. The second need is the need for variety or uncertainty, <laughs> for surprises, for pleasant surprises. I, for example, I would get bored if I work in the same job for 30 years. Initially, when I started my career, I chose to be a consultant, IT and management consultant. Why? Not because I knew the six basic human needs and I knew that I'm variety driven just because I thought it would be cool to work on different projects for different clients in different countries, different systems. And I, was, I always had that need, but I never knew that it existed. I just felt like I needed something different. I can't be doing the same thing over and over again. So people who are seeking risk, who are risk takers, who are looking for different projects, maybe who switch jobs more frequently, or entrepreneurs, CEOs, if you have a lot of, not CEOs, but generalists, I think generalists, if you have a lot of interests in a lot of different areas, that's also it's a good sign for somebody who's variety driven or somebody who's a risk taker, also a good sign of somebody who's variety driven. Um, sometimes um, children who come from a middle class family, like a very stable family, where everything was certain when they grew up, where everything was very stable. And certainly the case when I grew up in Germany, I was very, very well protected, very secure. 
um, sometimes children from those families they have that need for certainty covered and then they often seek um, uncertainty of variety okay the second need variety The third need is love and connectedness. Everybody has it, and we all need it in order to feel alive. It's about having and being very close with your partner, with your spouse, with your husband or wife, the girlfriend or boyfriend, but it can also be um, your parents or your children or grandchildren or very close friends, partners, colleagues, co-workers with whom you're very close. We all have that need for love and connectedness. And some people, <laughs> they think they can buy it with money, right? But we all have it. Some people have, they have a dog because dogs are very loyal animals. And if somebody doesn't have love and connectedness, um, sometimes a dog can give that. So um, people who are very family oriented, they're usually a sign of love and connectedness. Or as a parent, if you're willing to, to take a bullet for your child, that's a sign of love and connectedness. Or you're willing to give your kidney to a close relative, to a close friend. That's a sign for love and connectedness. The third need, love. The fourth need is the need for significance. It's to feel special, important and really needed. A lot of people um, mix confuse that with money. Do you think that people really want money, that money is the driving force behind things? No, it's usually significance. But money can often buy you significance. People are wearing a Rol Rolex, driving a Porsche, that's usually a sign of significance. People who show off, who like, oh, I have this car, I have this car. And money in these cases is just a vehicle to get you that significance. People who have academic titles, but really merely for the um, point of showing off their titles <laughs> or if you see somebody's email signature or a LinkedIn profile who has like 10,000 abbreviation MBA CRM blah, 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 master this and this and this these are usually people who are significance driven they like to show their accomplishments they like to show their title and they want to do it so that they feel special and feel needed and feel important in the environment so these are people who are significance driven For C N V Kens significance driven. Number five is the need for growth. That's the need to have a strong future vision, to have an outlook, to really see a path into the future. These are often people who are very ambitious, but not ambitious for the money's sake. So they are uh, using that money to show off, but not just ambitious for the sake of, hey, I want to grow, I want to have uh, room to grow, and I enjoy growing, I enjoy being promoted, I enjoy climbing up the corporate ladder, but for the fact of growing and not for the fact of getting more money and having more titles to show off the significance. So managers, CEOs who don't really show off their, their money and their titles, these are often, often people who are um, growth driven, but also um, people who have a very strong future outlook, who often plan ahead, who talk about the future, oh, in a few years I want to do this, or have planned this in 2018. These are usually people who are growth driven. Okay. Growth driven. And then number six is the ultimate need. If all of the other needs are fulfilled to win one way or the other, then people often have the need for contribution. It's contributing to a higher cause. This is If people are not fulfilled with any of the other five goals, this usually leads to fulfillment. Um, people who are um, doing a lot of voluntary, volunteer work, community work. Bill Gates, for example, he achieved everything with Microsoft that he could possibly do. What, he's, what is he doing now? Together with his wife, he's spending a lot of time and money in Africa, helping poor people and fighting diseases there. And also, um, companies also focus on that contribution-driven, 
because they want that their employees and their customers identify with them. Google's mission, for example, is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're actually doing that, but that's at least their mission. And if you're an engineer and you're looking for a job and you want to not only earn good money, but you also want to contribute to the world, then organizing information, make it universally accessible, is something that engineers who are contribution driven very much resonates with them. Another company mission statement I remember is um, the vision to help make the world a better place. So yes, a company is doing it because they want to tap into people who are contribution driven. You can see it, um, as I mentioned before, people who do a lot of volunteer work, who um, work in the community, they're usually contribution driven. But then it's also important, um, and then people, if, if people don't show off a lot about it, and it's purely contribution driven, but if people use the work again to drag, then a little bit of significance comes into play here again. Um, the difference between um, contribution and um, love and connectedness is that love and connectedness is usually towards a family member, a very close friend, versus the need to for contribution is usually more towards the society in general. So in general, if you want to help, you're probably more contribution driven. Six. Contribution. All right, so these are the six different needs that drive all of our behavior. Usually we have um, two needs which are very dominant, but we all have the need for all of those. Like I said, the need for love, everybody has it. The lead need to have some kind of certainty in life, everybody has that need. So yes, yeah, so if you're talking to people and you have identified roughly what you think the type of needs that they have, then you need to approach the communication with these people from a very, very different angle. Um, um, I'll run you through an example. Let's say you are in a company and the company has some. The industry you're in faces some challenges, some not significant challenges, just some um, medium regular challenges. And you're now trying to um, inspire and influence and, and win your people, win your employees over for you to participate in that new initiative. Okay, you're talking now to somebody who is certainty driven. You can approach it something like that. You know, there's a lot of change coming in towards our industry and things don't look um, very certain right now, but I really want to ensure that our position in the market is granted and is safe. In order to do that, we need to do a couple of um, changes. They're not significant, they're not major changes, but I really need you to, you and the entire team to support us with those changes so that we can continue on the path that we used to and that we can continue having that security in our business and that continued continuity that our customers value and that our employees value. Certainly driven. The opposite, variety driven. There are a lot of changes coming towards industry. Things will be completely different. It's a new game. And I've specifically picked you to help me um, drive this change forward. I know Peter in the service department, he'll make sure that the fundamentals are set, but I want you to focus on really driving the change here and making sure that we will not be surprised. Um, it will not go on as it is. There will be a, a lot of things will change in this industry, but I'm certain that if we tackle it right and if we make a good plan, we can um, take advantage of those um, massive, massive changes here in the industry, benefit from it and um, um, exit this situation as the leader in our industry. Variety driven. Somebody who's love driven. As you know, there are a lot of changes coming to the industry and I just want to make sure that everybody is on board. And um, specifically what I would like you to do is since you already have such a strong relationship with our customers, so we're well connected with them. You are um, very, very popular and well respected here within our, with the employees. I really like you to, to take a lead on that and make sure that we are all together as one, connected, embracing that change and make sure that we're all pulling in the same direction as, as we are one and not going on in different directions. So I really like you to be a um, strong part of that initiative and make sure we are connected and unified pursuing that change here. 
somebody is signif significance driven. I think that's pretty obvious. Hey Peter, I chose you specifically to head this initiative and um, to take the lead here. As you know, the industry is changing a lot and I think you can play a significant role here in um, fostering that change and making sure that we exit this um, crisis or this situation as the leader. And I'm, I think you're very, very needed in the situation with your experience, with your leadership skills and capabilities. So I'm really counting on you here to contribute in this situation. Okay. Somebody who's growth driven. This is a unique opportunity for us to really grow the company, take over the um, market leader and become the market leader. I have a very, very strong vision how we can use this crisis. We just need to put an action plan together. I want to put a five year plan together, how we will um, benefit from this and with a very strong outlook for the future growing our company into the market leading position. And I um, I really would like you to be on board with this initiative. And somebody who's contribution driven, you know, we have these changes coming in our industry. I would really like you to contribute there. You are um, well connected with the wider community, with the wider audience. And as you know, this initiative can have a major, major impact, not just on our um, customers and employees, but on the entire community here in the city we are, but also in our state, I think we can make a very, very big difference here in our communities by embracing that initiative and I'm embracing that change. So I'm very much counting on you here to be contributing to that, to make sure it's not just a success for us here in the small part, but also a wider success for the entire community and for our city. All right, these are six different ways how to talk to people who have different needs. If you're still with me watching this video, then I really want to congratulate you for um, finding out and really learning about influencing, impacting and inspiring others. I'm sure you already have a few ideas on how to implement that in your own life. Um, I've put a related video together on how to inspire and impact people using four techniques, which can be very well combined with those needs here to use um, questions, stories, metaphor and imitation. I'll include a link here to that video, or if you're on mobile, you have to click on the information icon here on top. I'll also include a few links about other um, things that I do, services that I offer, so you can learn a little bit more about it. Just click here on the screen on the links, or um, like I said, if you're on mobile, you need to click on the information icon on the uh, top right corner of your screen. Thanks for watching. Thank you um, for spending time with me today. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. The Productivity Hacks Channel with Klaus Geisendorfer.